Aside it's what's going on guys? This is Van Nagasm and I'm gonna be kicking my camera today. We're gonna to be talking about my editing workflow. So over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be rolling out a series of editing tutorials and tips. But first, I kind of figured that it would be a good idea for me to lay out my sort of basic editing workflow when it comes to photography. Just so you guys kind of understand where I'm at and what I'm talking about when I do give the editing tutorials. You know, keep us all on the same page in that. So let's jump straight into it. I so when I go to edit a photo, let's just assume that my images are already imported and I've sorted them all out and I've just selected the image I'm going to edit. So let's do that. Let's pick an image and let's get right into it. So the first thing I do when I open my image in Lightroom is I scroll down and I go to profile corrections and I click lens corrections, chromatic aberration correction, and then I level the image out. Now sometimes the profile will automatically select the lens correction for you if you shot in RAW, but sometimes it won't, so you have to just click and select the lens yourself. And the same with leveling, sometimes it will get a bang on and sometimes you have to go up and click the little grid at the top and sort of level it out itself. So once I've done that, the next thing I move on to is my white balance. That involves fixing my exposure, so that my temperature and then the tones within the image. It can take a little while to get right and it can be done according to taste. So once I've done that, I then go on to adjusting my shadows my whites, my blacks, and of course my highlight. I normally drag the shadows up and push the blacks down and push the whites up and take the highlights down a touch. This obviously can change from photo to photo depending on the effect I'm looking for, but generally I will want to bring out more detail in the landscape that I've shot, so I'll drag the shadows up to bring those out. I'll then also tweak the contrast a tiny bit just because I really like high contrast images. And lately I've been sort of dragging the exposure down a little bit just to underexpose image like I'll also chuck in a little bit of clarity tiny tiniest bit of clarity because uh you don't want to get too carried away with that guys, we know where that leads. Once I've finished with the shadows and whites, I, I rarely touch the levels, I'll be honest. Sometimes I will if I'm looking for a certain effect, but on a day-to-day -day edit of like a landscape or a portrait, I, I generally tend not to touch the levels, so we won't go into too much detail into that. The next step for me is the colours. So the first part of the colours that I'll edit is the hues. So I'll go down each bar, I'll tweak the hues according to how I want them to look. I'll normally drag yellows more to the left, make them a bit warmer. And I'll do the same with the oranges because I like my photos to have quite a warm look. And then I'll touch my blues and tweak them over to the teals just so we get a nice little teal and orange look going on. Once I've finished playing around with the hues, I then go on to saturation. Within most of my images, I will drag the saturation of the yellow quite far to the left because yellow is just quite an unattractive colour for me. And I'll normally push the orange up a little bit just to compensate for that. And then depending on the look I'm going for and well, what kind of image it is, I'll adjust the rest of the colours accordingly. And then finally, I move on to luminosity. I'll normally push oranges and yellows up a bit just to bring up the skin tones and normally like any other colours that are associated with that because I like them to be nice and bright. And again, I tend not to touch the rest of them too much. Once I've finished with the colours, I move up to split toning. This is something that I don't bring into all my images, but if I do, it's very minor. I'll normally bring my highlights up to the oranges with a small saturation, and then bring my shadows up to a nice teal look, just to give it that teal and orange split toning, which is obviously quite appealing. They're contrasting colors. Everyone's doing it nowadays, man. You gotta keep up with the times. Once I've finished with the split toning, I move down to the profile corrections, which are right at the bottom of the Lightroom option. First thing I'll do is I'll play around with the primaries. I'll normally tweak the blues to the left a bit, to the more Tills, which brings out a bit more of that teal and orange split tone in and sometimes I'll budge the, the uh, reds over to the right. I'll also pair around the primary shadows and see if nudging it to the left or the right brings more of an aesthetic look to my image. Which sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then once I finish with the primaries I'll go to the profile correction profiles. Sense. So if you click this little drop down bar here, you can see there's a bunch of different options. Each sort of camera will have its own options. Canon, Nick and Sony all have different profiles. They just sort of tweak a few of the different settings on the image and they can bring a different look to it entirely. A lot of time I'll just go for camera standard, but neutral can be quite nice and so can the faithful. Have a play around with them, see which ones you like, but they do bring a different look to your image. So once I've done that, I'll go back and see if there's anything that needs a tiny little bit of tweaking. Sometimes after touching one of the camera profiles and moving it along, the oranges can come out a bit too strong, so sometimes I'll just undersaturate that a bit. But if I'm happy with the overall look in Lightroom, the next thing I'll do is right click the image and then select Edit in Photoshop. Now, when I edit in Photoshop, I do a lot of my editing with a plugin called Google Nick, which is a free plugin which used to be quite a bit of money, but it's super, super useful, has a bunch of different tools. The one I use mainly is Color Effects Pro, and I'm going to show you guys that 
Now, I'll import the image into Color Fix Pro and there are various touch-ups that I'll do. I do have a few presets in here that I use that I've created myself. Really good for bringing out, I guess, some of the mid-tones in the image, which is this filter here. The Indian, Indian Summer filter is also quite good for bringing more tones out. And I'll just have a play around a bit. You guys can do that too. This is sort of a separate video you need to watch to learn how to use this, but it's a great tool when you can see the before and after of the image here. So once I finish with Google Nick, I will then sharpen my image by adding a, a filter to it. And then I will tweak any corrections that I need to make. So say there's like skin corrections that need to be made or there's a bit of trash that needs to be removed. I will generally do my touching up in Photoshop. And once I've done that, I will save the image as a TIFF and export it back into Lightroom. I know it's a lot of work, right? So now the image has been brought back into Lightroom. There's only a few things left to do before the image is done. And one of them is to add my filters. So this is radial filters, gradient filters, any filters that I want to do to sort of bring the image and focus it in more. So I'll sort of add darkness to the edge, I'll play around with that. Just kind of have a few final little tweaks in Lightroom before I export the final product. So now I've added my filters. I'm going to crop the image if it needs to be cropped. That I want it to look, tweak any of the final colors or exposures or white balance, and then I'm pretty much done. I'll export it and save it to my Google Drive to be downloaded to my phone. So that's it, guys. Um, this is my first time doing one of these tutorials, so please be easy on me. I'm sure I'll get better at it. I hope what I said made sense so that you found it quite helpful. That's just my general workflow when I edit images. Everyone's got a different way of doing it, and I'm by no means a professional, so I'm probably doing a lot of things wrong. But have a look. Let me know what you think. Let me know what editing based tutorial you want to see next by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.